Uh, welcome to our session. Uh, in this session, we will present Ray on Spark, a new feature we provided in Analytics Zoom. It allows users to write Ray code directly in line with your Spark code so that you can run those new emerging AI applications on your existing big data cluster in a distributed fashion. So this is the agenda for the talk. We will first give a quick overview of the backgrounds and the Zoom and the Ray, and then we'll dive into the details on the Ray on Spark, and as well as some of the real world use cases. So at Intel, we have been working on a lot of those initiatives to bring AI to big data. So one example is Big Data, which is a distributed deep learning framework we open sourced in 2016. It allows users to write those new deep learning applications as standard Spark program. On top of those lower level deep learning frameworks and big data systems, we have also open sourced Analytics Zoom, which is a unified data analytics and AI platform which allows users to apply those AI technologies such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, and so on to big data platforms, uh, for instance, Spark, Frink, Ray, and so on. This slide gives you a very high level overview of the Analytics Zoom technology stack. So as I mentioned before, Analytics Zoom is built on top of those deep learning frameworks, TensorFlow, PyTorch, OpenVINO, for instance, as well as those distributed analytics uh, systems like uh, Apache Spark, Apache Frink, Ray, and so on. You can run Analytics Zoom on your single laptop and then transparently scale it on your cluster, such as Kubernetes cluster or a big data cluster. Inside the analytics zoom, there are three layers. At the bottom layer, there is what we call integrated data analytics and AI pipeline, which is a horizontal layer that allows users to apply AI models, AI algorithms to their big data cluster in a distributed fashion. For instance, a lot of our users are running distributed TensorFlow on Spark to process very large data sets. On top of this pipeline layer, there is a automated machine learning workflow layer, which you try to automate a lot of the machine learning tasks uh, when the user try to actually build the end-to-end -end pipeline. For instance, uh, auto ML for time series analysis, automatically distributed model serving, and so on. On the top layer, we also provide a set of built-in models and algorithms for common use cases, uh, for instance, recommendation, time series analysis, and so on. User can directly use those built-in models in the underlying pipeline and uh, workflow. Uh, in addition, we also allow user to use any standard TensorFlow or uh, PyTorch models that is published by other other community, you can just use a standard model on analytics too. So before going to the details, I would like to provide a high level overview of what our objective is. So the goal we have when building analytics zoom is try to provide a unified data analytics and the AI platform so that the the user can easily scale their AI applications from a single laptop to a distributed big data cluster. So if you think about the life cycle of a data science project, it usually starts with prototyping with some sample data on your laptop. For instance, you're, maybe you're writing a Python notebook on your laptop. If you're happy with the notebook, happy with your prototype, then you may want to experiment with your history data, your last year's data, for instance, which could be pretty large and start on a big data cluster. And then if we're happy with experiments, you may want to deploy your 
pipeline onto your production environment for say A-B testing. Today, going from laptop to cluster to production environment is a very complex error prone process. You need to rewrite your code, transfer your data, convert your model and so on. So what we try to accomplish with analytic zoom is allow users to transparently scale from the laptop to their distributed cluster. You can directly build the, the entire end-to-end -end pipeline on your laptop, processing your production data in your big data cluster. And then with almost no code change, you can run your single node notebook on your cluster in a distributed fashion. So that's the goal we want to achieve with analytic zoom. And that's the exact reason why we try to provide a ray on Spark in analytic zoom. So next, I will uh, let uh, Kai to explain what uh, Ray is and how we implemented uh, an, a Ray on Spark and how to use it by our users. Okay, so thanks, thanks Jason for giving an impressive opening and a high level overview of our work these years in enabling the latest AI technologies on big data, especially the analytic zoo projects that we have been currently working on. Uh, next, I will continue this session and focused on introducing the Rayon Spark functionality of Analytics Zoo. I will elaborate how to use Rayon Spark to run emerging AI applications on big data clusters. Okay, so I will get started. So at the very beginning, in case some of you may not be that familiar with Ray, I would first of all give a quick introduction to Ray. So Ray is a fast and simple framework open sourced by UC Berkeley, which is particularly designed for building and running distributed applications. Ray Core provides simple primitives and a friendly interface to help users easily achieve parallelism. So for Python users, they only need to add several lines of Ray code uh, to run Python functions uh, or class instances in parallel. So this page shows some code segments of using Ray. First of all, to start Ray services, uh, users just need to import Ray and call Ray.init. So let's take a close look at the left part of the code. Uh, it shows how to use Ray to run Python functions in parallel. So given an ordinary Python function f here, which computes the square of a given number. So normally if you call this function in a for loop for five times, then these five function calls are executed sequentially, uh, one, one after another, right? So however, if you add the ray.remote decorator to this function, then this function magically becomes a ray remote function that can be executed remotely by ray. So again, if you, uh, call the remote function in a for loop for five times, then uh, these five fun remote function calls are executed in parallel. So the only uh, uh, difference in coding you need to pay attention to is that instead of just calling the function name as you would normally do, you need to add dot remote to the function name when you call remote function. So here you need to call f dot remote instead of just f. So finally, you can call rate.get to uh, invoke the execution of remote functions and retrieve the corresponding return values. In addition, as you may notice here, when we add the rate.remote decorator, you can specify the number of resources uh, needed for this function. So for example, how many number of CPU cores are needed to run this function. And if you specify this, Ray internally would allocate uh, such amount of resources for you. So similarly for Python classes that are stateful, you can also add the ray.remote decorator to the Python class to make it a ray actor. And the ray would initiate the instances of actors remotely. So the example on the right uh, creates five remote counter objects with the count value as its state. So now these, all, these counters are all ray actors and we can uh, increment the value of the the counters, five counters at the same time. So still you need to add dot remote when you create the counter object as a reactor and you need to add dot remote as well when you call the methods of uh, an actor. 
Okay, so these are two simple examples of using Ray to achieve simple parallelism in change of several lines of code. And such kind of Ray code or Ray applications can either run locally or scale to a large cluster. So actually Ray is uh, more powerful and useful than simply writing such, a, such kind of trivial code. So Ray is packaged with several high-level libraries to accelerate machine learning workloads. So first of all, Ray Tune is a Python library uh, built on top of Ray for experiment execution and, and hyperparameter tuning at any scale. So secondly, ILLib provides a unified API for a variety of deep reinforcement learning applications. And Ray SGD implements uh, thin wrappers for TensorFlow and PyTorch uh, for the ease uh, for the ease of a uh, data parallel distributed training. So these three libraries would be useful for you to um, build emerging AI applications easily. So this is just a quick overview of Ray. And if you want to know about Ray, you can visit their website for more details. So Ray is quite a good framework for uh, building and running emerging AI applications, such as hyperparameter tuning and reinforcement learning. And actually in the industry, there is now more and more demand to embrace the emerging AI technologies uh, and apply them on the production data uh, to bring benefits. However, we observe that developers are facing several challenges when they try to do this. So first of all, uh, in the production environment, the production data is usually stored and processed on big data clusters. Uh, however, uh, quite a lot of efforts and steps are required to directly deploy Ray applications on the existing Hadoop for Spark clusters. Uh, secondly, it could be a concern for PySpark or Ray users to prepare the Python environment on each node without bringing side effects to the existing cluster. Last but not least, uh, conventional approaches would set up two separate clusters, one for big data applications and the other for AI applications. Uh, and this inevitably introduces uh, the extra expensive data transfer overhead and additional efforts to maintain separate systems and workflows in production. So it would be great and cost saving if we can build a unified system for big data analytics and advanced AI applications. And that's why we take the opportunities to do our work for Rayon Spark. Rayon Spark can easily uh, enable users to inject uh, advanced AI applications of Ray into the existing big data processing pipeline. Okay, next I will talk about the design implementation details of Ray on Spark. Uh, we develop Ray on Spark to allow distributed Ray applications to seamlessly integrate into Spark data processing pipelines. So as the name indicates, Ray on Spark runs right on top of PySpark uh, on big data clusters. Uh, here, we, uh, in the following discussion, I would take the young cluster as an example, but the same logic can be applied to other clusters, such as the Kubernetes cluster or the Mesos cluster as well. First of all, for the environment preparation, we leverage Conduit Pack and Young Distributed Cache to automatically package and distribute the Python dependencies uh, uh, across all, all the nodes in the cluster at runtime. And in this way, users do not need to pre-install the necessary dependencies uh, on all nodes beforehand, and the cluster environment remains clean after the tasks finish. So the right figure, the figure on the right here gives an overview of the architecture of Rayon Spark. So in the Spark's implementation, we are quite familiar that we create a Spark context object on the driver node and the Spark context launches multiple Spark executors across the young cluster uh, to perform Spark tasks. 
So in our Ray on Spark implementation, we additionally create a Ray context object uh, on the Spark driver, and it utilizes the existing Spark context to automatically uh, launch the Ray processes across the Young cluster. The Ray processes exist alongside Spark executors. And uh, one of the Ray processes is the Ray master process and the remaining are Ray slave processes. And they are also called Raylets. Uh, in addition, the Ray context is also responsible for creating a Ray manager inside uh, each Spark executor to manage the Ray processes. That is to say, the Ray manager would automatically shut down the Ray processes and uh, release the corresponding resources after the Ray applications finish. So in the setting of Ray on Spark, we have Ray processes and Spark processes exist in the same cluster. And therefore, uh, it makes it possible for uh, a Spark in-memory IDDs or data frames to be directly streamed into Ray applications for advanced AI purposes. So this is basically the architecture of Ray on Spark. Okay, with regard to the usage of Ray on Spark, uh, users only need to add several lines of code to directly run Ray applications on the young clusters. So three steps to do this. First of all, you need to import the corresponding packages in our Analytics Zoo project and create a Spark context object using the API in this Spark on Young we provide. Uh, of course, you can use an existing Spark context if you wish. Uh, in this Spark on Young uh, sets up Spark on the underlying Young cluster. Uh, it helps to uh, package and distribute the specified Conda environment with all the Python dependencies across all the Spark executors. So when calling this function, you can also specify the uh, Spark a Spark configuration, such as the number of executors and executor costs, etc. So after we create a Spark context, uh, step two is to create a Ray context object. And Ray context is the contact point between uh, Ray and Spark. So you can also input some Ray specific configurations, such as the object memory store when you create a Ray context object and you call raycontacts.init to uh, start all the Ray processes across the young cluster. So now after doing these two steps, we have uh, both Spark and Ray ready in the young cluster. And now we can directly write some Ray code and, uh, to, and make them run on the young cluster. So the red box on the right is the Ray on Spark code you need to add. And the black box is the pure Ray code uh, that you have already seen, already seen in the previous slide to create several Ray actors and do the increment. And after the Ray applications finish, you can call Ray contacts.stop to shut down the Ray cluster. So this is basically the code you need to add to use Ray on Spark, which should be straightforward and easy to learn. And if you want to have more instructions on running Ray on Spark, you can visit our documentation page for more details. Uh, in the last part of this session, I'm going to share some advanced real world use cases that we have been built on top, Ray on, on top of Ray on Spark. Uh, which I suppose many of you might be more interested in. Uh, first of all, we have built AutoML in Analytics Zoo for scalable time series prediction. So AutoML automates the process of feature generation, model selection, and hyperparameter tuning for a time series application. And we have already some initial customer cooperations for AutoML. So actually in this conference, uh, my colleagues have another session to particularly discuss AutoML and its use cases. So here I won't go into further details now, and, but if you are interested in our work for AutoML, you can visit our, our GitHub page to find more details and related use cases.
apart from auto ML, we have built a data parallel and a deep learning model training pipeline on top of Rayon Spark. So in our pipeline, first of all, we support users to use either PySpark or Ray for parallel data loading and processing. Uh, then we implement scene wrappers for different deep learning frameworks to automatically set up the distributed environment uh, on big data clusters using Rayon Spark. So the Ray SGD I mentioned before has already done some of this work that we can extend and refer to. Uh, and, but in addition to using the native distributed modules provided by TensorFlow or PyTorch based on the parameter server architecture, we also support users to choose the Horowood framework from Uber as the other backend for distributed training. So with such a data parallel distributed training pipeline, users do not need to worry about the complicated setup for the distributed training on big data clusters. And what they need to do is just to, uh, first of all, write a training script on a single node and we do the work for you to make the distributed training happen. And you only need to add several lines of, to modify several lines of code in, uh, to your original code to achieve this. Uh, lastly, I would share our the successful cooperation between Intel and Burger King to build a recommendation system for Burger King's drive-through scenario using Rayon Spark. Uh, so drive-through, first of all, drive-through is a common scenario in the fast food industry where the guests purchase purchase food without leaving their cars. So the guests first browse the mm, out, uh, browse the outdoor the menu on the, the, the menu on the outside digital menu board and they talk to the uh, cashier inside the restaurant through a microphone system to place their orders and the guests would be given recommendations displayed on the outdoor digital menu board when they place their order so but as a world famous uh, fast food company uh, Burger King collects a large number of transaction records every day and they use Spark to perform ETLO data cleaning and pre-processing steps on their big data, uh, on their big data and they have their own big data clusters. And uh, after the data process and they uh, conduct distributed training on, on this data. Uh, so they choose uh, MXNet as their deep learning framework. And before cooperating with us, they would allocate a separate GPU cluster dedicated for distributed MXNet training. But they find that such a solution is not quite efficient since uh, in the entire pipeline, a large portion of the total time is spent on copying data from the big data clusters to the GPU cluster. Also, they need uh, quite a lot, lot of additional efforts to maintain the GPU clusters regularly. And it is often the case that for most, um, for many companies, the uh, GPU resources are not that, uh, are not that, are, are quite are relatively limited and compared with the CPU resources, CPU server resources. So after adopting the Rayon Spark solution, uh, and the entire solution becomes more efficient and easier to maintain since uh, we run the distributed MXNet training on exactly the same cluster where the big data is stored and processed. Similar to Ray SGD, we implement a lightweight wrapper layer around the native MXNet modules uh, to handle the complicated uh, env distributed environment setup of MXNet on the young cluster. And each MXNet worker takes a portion of the data set from Spark on its local node and trains the recommendation model. And MXNet workers and servers both uh, run as Ray processes and they communicate with each other through the uh, distributed key value store natively provided by MXNet. So in this way, the entire pipeline uh, runs on a single cluster and there is no extra data transfer needed. And such a solution has been successfully uh, deployed into Burger King's uh, production environment to serve their uh, 
drive through customers. And, and this solution has been proven to be efficient, scalable, and easy to maintain. So here comes to the end of this session. And as a conclusion in this session, we mainly talk about our work for Rayon Spark and we develop Rayon Spark to enable users to directly run emerging AI applications on big data platforms. And uh, I introduced the, uh, the implementation details of Rayon Spark and our Rayon Spark solution has been adopted by Burger King in the production environment. And we are also cooperating with other customers to seek for more use cases of Rayon Spark. So if you want to have a review of the details of Rayon Spark, don't hesitate to look at our blog of Rayon Spark with the link given here. Uh, Rayon Spark is a key feature of Analytics Zoo, and we have developed Analytics Zoo uh, as a unified platform for data analytics and AI. So if you are interested in Analytics Zoo, you can go to our GitHub page or documentation page for more details. And I'm sure that you may find uh, other function functionalities be useful to you as well. So if you have a GitHub account, don't uh, please kindly uh, give us a star and so that you can uh, find us on GitHub whenever you need. So for the future work, we are now working on the full support and more out-of-box solutions for easily scaling out Python AI pipelines from single node to cluster based on Ray and Spark. And we would be glad to share our progress and more use cases in the future if we have chances. So the last page here is the overview of the Intel optimized end-to-end -end data analytics and AI pipeline. So Intel is devoted to help our customers build optimized solutions on Intel platforms from the bottom uh, hardware architectures to the uh, software optimization. So if you want to know more about how Intel can help you to build your pipeline, you can go to our website, intel.com slash AI or software.intel.com for more details. So that's pretty much for this session. And thank you all for choosing this session and hope that what Jason and I have talked about will be helpful to you. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to raise and have a good day. Thank you.